Welcome. My name is Carl Dannerberger, Professor of Turfgrass Science here at The Ohio State University. Case study podcasts originate from local or regional areas for the purpose of discussing a pertinent topic of turfgrass management. These podcasts are not an endorsement of one practice, nor do they imply there's only one way to do something. This podcast originates from Hilton Head, South Carolina, and looks at the fall process of winter overseeding. Hilton Head is an island off the southeastern coast of South Carolina, shown here approximately where this circle, yellow circle is. The climate is subtropical. Warm season turf grasses predominate. Temperatures are reflective of a subtropical climate, with the average maximum highs during the summer approaching 90. Winter temperatures are moderated by the proximity to the ocean. The first frost historically occurs during the first week in December. Precipitation is high and can contribute to humid conditions during the summer. I'll take a second uh, just to give you some background on Hilton Head Island. The first Europeans arrived here from Spain in 1521. However, in 1663, an Englishman by the name of Captain William Hilton arrived looking for a place to plant sugarcane and indigo and claimed the island for the British crown. In 1861, Hilton Head was overrun by Union soldiers during the Civil War and remained in their hands until the end of the war. After the war, the cotton crop was destroyed by the bull weevil, and Hilton Head was abandoned. In the 1940s, the island was rediscovered as a hunting ground by wealthy sportsmen. In 1956, a bridge was built connecting the island with the mainland. This helped spur the resort development on the island by Charles Fraser, who created the Sea Pines Plantation Resort. The focus of this podcast centers on the Sea Pines area of Hilton Head, more specifically at Harbortown Golf Links. I want to thank Gary Snyder, the golf course superintendent at Harbortown, for not only providing me with insight into overseeding, but provided some of the photographs. I also want to thank Jim Cregan, superintendent of the Sea Marsh and Ocean Course at Sea Pines, for providing background information. Jim is currently overseeing the renovation of the Ocean Course. Pete Dye, who designed several courses in the area, is the golf course architect in charge of the renovation. In addition, some of the pictures are from Defusky Island, an island roughly a mile off the coast of Hilton Head, where two courses, the Melrose and Bloody Point, are located. The golf resort is owned by Troon Golf. The golf course superintendent is Gregory Hayfley. Overseeding Bermuda grass with a cool season turf grass, which is primarily perennial rye grass, provides winter color to the turf and for some protection to the Bermuda grass crown. Here you can see the Bermuda grass beginning to go off color as cooler fall temperatures arrive. The impact of proper overseeding is visually apparent here on the same hole previously shown, except this picture was taken in early spring. In this case, the tees, fairways, and greens were overseeded while the rough was left to go dormant. Winter overseeding is primarily done on resort courses, with some combination of tees, greens, fairways, and in a few instances, roughs being overseeded. Public and private clubs may overseed greens and tees, but fairways are optional. Actually, a few courses in the area paint the fairways green. The following photographs and descriptions provide a collage of the overall process of winter overseeding. The process for pre preparing to overseed can vary from golf course to golf course and superintendent to superintendent, while other factors such as tournament or other events may influence the process. There is no one right way. And as a disclaimer, the mention of products is in no way an endorsement by the Ohio State University or me. Products used should follow the manufacturer's label. As background, the predominant Bermuda grass variety used on golf course fairways in the area is Tiff Way, also known as 419. This picture was taken approximately five days prior to overseeding. Many of the greens in the area are Tiff Dwarf, or one of the new ultra dwarfs like Tiff Eagle. Prior to overseeding, the goal is to provide a healthy Bermuda grass turf going into the fall. Proper fertilization, thatch, and pest control are integral parts. 
In, in addition, preparation for or for seeding fairways may require an application of a pre-emergent herbicide like barricade. If the fairways are to be overseeded, the application is made approximately six to eight weeks prior to overseeding. Generally, if poetrivialis is used, the longer the period of time needed between the herbicide application and overseeding. This herbicide is not labeled for greens. The major weed concern is Poe annual. If Poe annual is the targeted weed, Rubicon, a turf fungicide, may or is often used. Generally, two or three applications are needed based on the turf grass used in overseeding. With these treatments, the goal is to suppress Poe annual germination long enough that the overseeded turf grass gets established, allowing it to outcompete germinating Poe annual. A relatively new herbicide, the sulfonylurea, can be applied to Bermuda grass greens and fairways and is called transit. The common name is rimsulfuron, which may be applied five days prior to overseeding. Again, always follow label directions. In many situations, the growth regulator Primo is applied two days prior to overseeding. The purpose is to slow the Bermuda grass, making it less competitive uh, against or toward the overseeded seedlings, and also reduce the likelihood or frequency of mowing during the overseeding process and establishment. Besides weed control applications, little mechanical preparation is done in fairways. Generally, the seed is just basically dropped. Helping the fairway overseeding process is actually the change in Bermuda grass growth at the, which occurs at this time of the year. The canopy tends to open up and not be as dense. Thus the seeds can trickle or fall closer to the soil surface with a more open canopy. The seeding rate is approximately 400 pounds of perennial ryegrass per acre. It may vary depending on the situation, but the idea, I think, is to seed at a rate that gives the turf the green look, but a healthy Bermuda grass base provides a desirable plain surface. This photo shows overseeding of a fairway. Again, no real fairway preparation was done. Some golf courses contract out a process that literally blows air down onto the recently spread seed which enables or enhances its ability to move down into the canopy. This photograph shows a process where a machine blows air directly down onto the turf, moving the seed down. In a few situations, roughs are overseeded. Not a common practice on many golf courses. However, it is done at Harbortown Golf Links as part of the preparation for the Verizon Heritage Tournament that is held in the spring. Usually, the seeding rate for roughs is half that of fairways. This photo just shows a crew member overseeding a rough area. The perennial ryegrass will begin to come up within 7 to 10 days, uh, depending on conditions it may come up sooner. And ideally the transition from Bermuda grass to ryegrass is not obvious. Again, the seeding rate is not heavy if the Bermuda grass is healthy. Preparation for overseeding the ultra dwarf greens is a little more intense than fairways. Prior to overseeding, the greens are verticut multiple directions. A popular turf to overseed greens with is Poa trivialis at approximately 12 pounds per thousand square feet. Seeding is done in multiple directions. In this case, a foam marker is used to delineate where the spreader has gone. Rotary spreaders are often utilized. After seeding, the greens are top dressed and lightly rolled to promote seed soil contact. Providing fertilizer and water is critical in establishing the overseeded turf. Seedlings often again appear in 7 to 10 days. The seedling appearance in the vertical grooves is apparent here. If timed correctly, the conversion to the cool season turf is hardly noticeable. The slight off color of the Bermuda grass from cooler temperatures and the greener sheen appearing from the initial appearance of the seedlings is shown here. Green surrounds are seeded during green overseeding. Oftentimes the seed is perennial ryegrass seeded at a higher rate than what would have been found in the fairway. 
The seeding of the green surrounds as shown here. Notice the noticeable greener color compared to the lower seeding rate found in the fairway. This concludes this presentation on overseeding. As a short advertisement and explanation for why we are in Hilton Head at this time, we have a short course symposium entitled the Ohio State Global Turfgrass Management Workshop, for, which is um, put on for international students or in the United States to the Ohio State International Turfgrass Intern Program. The last few years we have had the, held the symposium at Sea Pines during late October. The OSU International Internship Program is coordinated by Mike Chrisman, along with Mike O'Keefe, who is shown here, and John Beardmore, who oversee 100 international college students who intern yearly on golf courses and sports fields throughout the United States. Approximately half the students attend this three-day symposium. These students are exposed to a range of topics in both classroom setting, from an academic perspective, industry perspective, with on-site diagnosis as part of this symposium, as well as learning in the field from experts. Students ought to develop a camaraderie among themselves. The 2006 attendees at Sea Pines are shown here, and with that, you have reached the end of this podcast.